got to the point where it was like that and like cocaine and mm -hmm. maybe a couple other things religion and, religion cocaine what a what a choice <laughs> right and uh so i told myself i'm either going to get really you know I, I made the gave myself this ultimatum on a sunday night mm -hmm. getting ready for class for the coming week at the end of february um i'm either going to get religion by the weekend or i'm gonna i'm gonna pursue some of the some of the darker things that i hadn't been into yet and if, the, if those you already had a hierarchy in your mind of what would be good and what would be bad. That's interesting. I think it's maybe. not as though you thought of it as an option for an escape. You just, but you thought of it as this would be preferable to that. I think so. That's interesting. And if that, if neither of those worked out, then the plan was to end my life. And so mm -hmm. I kind of went about my week. I forgot this ultimatum moment I had on Sunday night. But there was a, um, <clears throat> there was a girl that I was uh, kind of interested in. Uh, named Steph, who uh, wanted to hang out on Wednesday, and uh, turned out when we got together, she wanted to see. So this, I'm dating myself, but she wanted to see the Passion of the Christ. It was in theaters. Okay, wow. And there was a lot of buzz in the news about it. There was buzz on campus about it. Like not non-religious people were going to see it. You know, yeah. there was. And uh, I was like, no, I don't really want to go to a Jesus movie. And. Uh, But you did. Yeah, to keep, to, <laughs> to keep Steph happy. Now, I look back on this. The Holy Spirit was working yeah. over time, you know. But in the moment, I felt like, oh, I'm just keeping Steph happy. You know, you wonder how a guy like me winds up in a Jesus movie. And there's a, um, have you seen the, the film? No, I, I've heard, well, I, I read the book. Okay. I can't, even though it saved my soul, it's hard to recommend because it's so heinously violent. Right, I understand. Um, uh, but there is a scene in the movie where, and it's the movie, you know, it was made by a... Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's very Catholic as well. Yeah. So stations of the Cross are represented well in the movie. And there's one station, that I think it's the second time Jesus stumbles under the weight of the cross. And Mary is trying to get to him. Um, and... So she says, get me close to my son. And John takes her down a parallel pathway to the street Jesus is walking on. And we see Jesus stumble under the weight of the cross right as Mary turns the corner and looks down the alley and sees him with just the... Blood and gore. Oh, uh, blood and the mucus and the gore just raining off him. And she <clears throat> she's running towards him. And the, the filmmaker did something really interesting then. So... As Jesus is falling under the weight of the cross and Mary's running to him to put her arms up under, around him, it splices back and forth with the scene of Jesus as a little boy running in the compound um, and tripping and falling headlong like little kids do. And you see Mary's face light up and she runs over and she picks him up the way you pick up a little boy or a little girl. You know, you put one hand behind their head and one under their bum and you just, you just hold them, right? And right as... So we see her gathered little Jesus up. That's right when she's getting under him uh, as he's carrying the cross. <clears throat> and as she's holding him, she's looking up at him and his blood's raining on her. And he looks at her with his one good eye. The other one had been bruised shut. And he says, see mother, I make all things new. And I burst into tears in the movie theater. It was like, I... That's incredible. If, if there's a God out there that can make what I went through as a child new and make the bullying new and make the suicidality new and make the misery new and make the pointlessness new, I wanted I wanted to know that God. And so I Your life got saved by a scene in a movie. <laughs> Yeah, that so, in itself is a miracle. <laughs> is, a, is a beautiful miracle. It is. I uh, I went home, so I was I had plans to hang out with Steph after the movie, but I I asked her to go home, and I, I went back to my dorm, and I uh, had my dorm room to myself that night. My roommate was gone, and uh, from ten thirty to two thirty, I I kind of waged this tug of war in my head. You know it. It, if there's like the thing that the movie confronted me with 
was that a god, a literal god, had walked on rocks on this planet. Like, if I bought a ticket to Israel, yeah. I could, I could walk, physically I could touch, physically the, same touch the same things that, that a deity touched, you know? And you allow for that, and everything, everything changes, you know? There, there's, if there is no god, like I had been living, like I had been assuming, uh, eat, drink, and be merry, right? For tomorrow we die. If there was a God, and I was thinking, you know, this is the maybe the one thing I have to thank my Roman Catholic upbringing for is um, I was thinking in terms of a a Christian God, you know, a, a, a religious God. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't just a God; it was God three in one, Father, Spirit, Son. You know, there's there was. There were tracks to, as, for my heart to run on as we went down. It, it was sort of this this system rather than a person. It was this this a formula. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a uh, God was just a an angry energy out there in the universe for the mm -hmm. longest time to me. And then seeing the film, I think that's when I realized that he was personal. And so at two thirty in the morning. Um, I, I prayed, um, I think sincerely for the first thing, you know, I prayed my rosary, I prayed penance, I, you know. <laughs> but I think I actually prayed, prayed for the first time. And um, uh, I remember telling God, I will, you know, all these things I've been running after, the friends, the look, the women, the mm -hmm. weight loss, the, the party, those, whatever. I'll, I'll give that all to you. I'll, you know, there's this, mm. they call it the canyon, Beaver Ave, because it feels like a canyon because there's high-rise apartments on each side. Mm. And I remember telling him, I'll walk the canyon from one end to the other while everybody points and laughs. As long as I know you're with me, will you be with me? And he came into my dorm room. Like, I know, now I know he's omnipresent. I didn't know that now, then. But in a special way, in a way I can't explain, he came into my dorm room. And he told me that I was his, and he told me I was going to be okay, and he told me I was going to go into ministry, and that's what started my Christian life. And so everything, everything changed. Starting the next day, um, I started telling friends like, "Hey, I think I became a Jesus freak." <laughs> <laughs> was with, you know, with that confidence, like, uh, I guess this happened right. to me. <laughs> this is a thing, and uh, I really don't know what happened, but it happened, and I'm going after it with everything I got. Being that you know you're 34, and it was mm -hmm. when you were 19. About this doesn't sound like a phase. You really have. A, I mean, I didn't know you um, back then, but mm -hmm. from your description of what you were to what you are now, you really are a transformed person. I am. I, I, and it's and it's it's the Holy Spirit in me. You know, Amen. I was, I was, um, I might struggle now. I, I, I've, I've, I've resolved to always be honest with God. I don't think we do ourselves any service by um, having to pretend that everything's always smiles and rainbows, right. and you know, and you're, you're, you're the. You're authentically what a human being, as God made them, ought to be. I try to be. 